Welcome to the short lecture promoted by the Interfaces European Project. My name is Lucia Gardossi and I'm talking from the University of Trieste, Italy. During the next 10 minutes, I will introduce the concept of eco-design and circularity. And I will use plastics as a case studies. So the title of this module is Eco-Design and Circularity. Plastics as a case study. Plastic pollution is one of the most challenging environmental issues of the current years. Green gas, gas emissions derived from plastics were 1.8 billion tons in 2019. That means 3.4% of global emissions with 90% of these emissions coming from their production and conversion from fossil feedstock. The estimated global leakage of plastic terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems was above 22 million tons in the same year. Therefore, the material and polymer sectors are facing this challenging of integrating the sustainability of both production processes and final plastic products, including their management after disposal. But what are the possible solutions for addressing the plastic emergency? Looking at the management of their end of life, the use of recycled materials must be encouraged when technically and legally feasible. The transition from fossil to renewable bio-based plastic should be promoted whenever robust evidences support their environmental and social benefits. However, the current figures show that in front of 2021 global production of plastics accounting for more than 390 million tons, more than 90% of global produced plastics are still from fossil-based twister. Recycled plastics represent only 8.3% and bio-based plastics account for only 1.5%. Therefore, strategies are needed that provide effective scientific and technical solution embracing all phases of the life cycle of the materials. Here come the concept of eco-design of environmentally safe polymers and plastics. Renewable bio-based polymers are one of the solutions that, that bioeconomy offers to solve the environmental emergency connected to fossil-based plastics. In this context, the inclusion of bio-based plastics in the market must be motivated by their green credentials, but also their functional properties. But first of all, it is important to clarify some definition about bio-based plastics. Plastics in general can be classified following the criteria of the feedstock used for producing the monomers they are made, so that we can distinguish between bio-based and fossil-based polymers and plastics. On the other hand, the final properties of the plastics in terms of durability or biodegradability derives from the chemical and physical properties of the polymers used for their production. Their biodegradability is a consequence of the chemical structures of the polymers, but especially of the chemical nature of bonds connecting monomers. Biodegradability does not depend on the source of the feedstock, so that the misuse of bio-based plastics might also lead to downstream environmental impacts, which must be prevented through adequate and clear labeling explaining how the plastic waste must be managed. That means that there are some bio-based polymers which are not biodegradable 
and also fossil-based polymers, which are biodegradable. Therefore, each type of plastic requires a different management of waste to enable, at their end of life, effective circularity. Ecodesign must take, therefore, into account the entire cycle of life. Let's have a more detailed look to the properties of some of the most common bio-based and biodegradable plastics. They are biopolymers such as polysaccharides, including starch or chitosan, or polyesters biosynthesized by engineer microbe. This is a case of polyhydroxyalkanoates. They must meet standards in terms of performance, and because of that, they can be recognized from labels. A dedicated European standard specifies that the term biobase means derived from biomass, and that biobase products are products which are wholly or partially derived from biomass. Conversely, it is important to characterize the amount of renewable carbon contained in the product by following recognized standard methodologies. Concerning their biodegradability, it must be underlined that in all cases, the biodegradation of a polymer or a plastic depends on the environmental condition and also on the shape and thickness of the plastic sample. On that respect, plastic that can be treated and biodegraded in industrial composting plants can be certified as compostable. Plastic products, in order to be certified as compostable and labeled accordingly, must provide proof of compostability by meeting the following requirements. No visible contamination or fragments in the final compost. No negative effects on the composting process. Almost complete absence of heavy metals. No negative effect on compost quality. Bio-based and compostable plastics represent an interesting case of circularity because they can be recycled within biogenic carbon cycles. In fact, they can be converted into carbon dioxide through microbial anaerobic fermentation as occurring in natural waste. The collection and industrial processing of organic waste, including biocompostable plastics, provide biogas, biomethane, and compost that is useful for soil regeneration. Besides biosynthetized polymers, the scientific research has delivered a wide array of polymers deriving from the chemical or enzymatic polymerization of different monomers. These monomers generally derive from fossil feedstock but nowadays, that are all, there are also many examples of monomers obtained from biomass or biomass fermentation, such as sassinic acid, adipic acid, butandiol, glycerol. Again, in all cases, the monomers and the chemical nature of bonds connecting them determine the final properties of the material. Some of them can be biodegraded in the soil or in the sea, others only under control conditions in industrial composting plants. Other polymers are expected to have long operating life, lasting several years. These are the durable plastics. Examples are polyapides, aromatic polyesters, polyuretanes, polyepoxides, used in technical applications like textile fibers or automotive applications. Therefore, in these cases, biodegradability is not desired. These durable polymers can be recycled mechanically, but the corresponding treatments cause 
a downgrading of the plastic performance. As a consequence, the polymer can be recycled mechanically for a limited number of cycles and for the production of products of lower technological quality. As an alternative, more recently, the chemical enzymatic recycle of durabit plastics has been studied and implemented also in industry. Nature provided inspiration for developing suitable technologies able to hydrolyze the bonds of some durable polyester. Cutinases, for instance, are enzymes present in pathogenic fungi that attack and degrade the cutin that covers the surface of leaves. Cutin is a large hydrophobic polyester, and several cutinases prove to be able to catalyze the hydrolysis also of non-natural like uh, uh, polymers uh, famous uh, in the market and very popular like polyethylene terephthalate, the so-called PET. In this way, the monomers obtained from the hydrolysis of the polymers can be recovered and reused for several synthetic cycles. So I hope that this brief presentation offered an overview of some of the scientific technological solutions available for solving the problem of plastic sustainability through a rational eco-design of new and more efficient materials. These materials must be designed and produced to meet the specific technological requirements uh, or their final application and use. But each phase of their life cycle must adhere to stringent criteria of sustainability. At the end of this brief uh, talk, I would like to thank you for your attention, also on behalf of the Interfaces Project. Thank you. Thank you.